During the early part of the Great Depression, Roddy Davenport Jr., a textile salesman from Chattanooga, traveled north and stopped by a White Castle restaurant. He was so impressed by the White Castle model, he went back to Chattanooga and teamed up with Glenn Sherrill to open up the first Crystal restaurant in October of 1932. Davenport christened his new restaurant Crystal because his wife admired how crystal clean the restaurant was. In an effort to distinguish his restaurant from others, Davenport chose its distinctive spelling with a K. The first order ever placed at Crystal was for six Crystal hamburgers and a cup of coffee for 35 cents. From there, the restaurant flourished, as value-conscious Chattanoogans flocked to Crystal for its five-cent hamburger. Just like White Castle, Crystal also stuck to a small menu. The Crystal menu focused on sliders and coffee only. The idea was to provide a good meal during the Great Depression, with each item only costing five cents. With the success of his restaurant, Davenport saw new opportunities to open additional locations through the end of the 1930s and into the 1940s. The company was growing rapidly throughout the southeast, and Crystal never sought to extend itself too far north because of an agreement it reached with White Castle. The old Mason-Dixon line was the cutoff, with Crystal focusing its growth on Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama. During this time, Crystal also set itself apart by serving its food on real porcelain plates, rather than using wrappers or boxes like the competition. Crystal also began adding things to their menu, like french fries, chili, and milkshakes. As the chain entered the post-war era, they also began to open drive-in style restaurants. These early drive-ins retained many aspects of a regular restaurant. Waiters took orders and brought the meals out, and customers would eat in their cars. In 1954, famous Memphis DJ Daddy-O Dewey Phillips gave an unknown singer named Elvis Presley his first radio airtime. After this broadcast, Daddy-O and Elvis headed down to the local Crystal restaurant and passed out sliders to a crowd of new Elvis fans. Elvis remained a loyal customer and would often buy sacks of the small square burgers for all of his friends. As the restaurant business shifted to a more efficient fast food model, so too did Crystal. Following the lead of McDonald's, Crystal began to eliminate waiters, streamlined food operations, and adjusted their menu accordingly. During the 1960s and 1970s, Crystal continued to build its chain in the southeast, expanding into northern Florida and Mississippi. Their small square hamburger still accounted for over 70% of the company's sales. In fact, the company played up its distinctive burger and regional heritage to differentiate itself from its rivals. They knew that they couldn't compete with the likes of McDonald's and Burger King, so they kept the family-owned company intentionally small, rooted in small-town America. Crystal also dabbled in fried chicken, opening standalone chicken restaurants across Chattanooga. These country-inspired restaurants spread to other cities, but fizzled out in the 1980s. Crystal also became a franchise owner of many Wendy's locations in Baltimore and Washington, D.C. They weren't a fan of franchising their own restaurants, but saw value in franchise agreements with other companies that didn't compete with their own business. During the 1980s, Crystal launched a massive advertising campaign featuring a hyperactive cowboy named Sid and a stick horse named Sheila. They proclaimed, when you've gotta have a crystal, you've gotta have a crystal. The campaign was successful, and made them famous for both square burgers and zany TV commercials. The 1990s saw Crystal open up to franchising. 
In an effort to grow their brand in a less expensive way, Crystal allowed franchisees to build drive through restaurants. These new Crystal Quick restaurants had limited menus, but were quick and easy to open. They later also began to permit full-service franchises. In 1992, Crystal decided to become a public company in order to raise money to open more company-owned stores. The company earned $24 million in its initial public offering, and they devised a plan to open more company-owned locations in larger urban markets while leaving small-town areas for franchises. In 1994, there were 240 company-owned Crystals and 44 franchises. The mid-1990s brought legal troubles to the Crystal Corporation. Crystal had to settle lawsuits about altered time cards and overtime pay, which cost them $800,000. In order to protect itself against further judgments, Crystal filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in an effort to restructure. Following the bankruptcy, Crystal was acquired by a former Coca-Cola executive named Philip Sanford. Over the next two decades, Crystal had successes and setbacks. They created a Crystal Lovers Hall of Fame in 2005, which honored dedicated employees and customers. This lasted for about five years before it all but disappeared. The chain was also among the first to offer free Wi-Fi, starting in 2003. For this, they are considered pioneers, and at the time, the brand was the largest provider of free Wi-Fi of any fast food chain in the country. By 2020, Crystal had amassed a mountain of debt, with nearly $100 million owed. This led to bankruptcy number two, and once again, they emerged with a hopeful outlook. They were purchased by Fortress Investment Group for $49 million. This included 200 company-owned locations and 100 franchises. As for now, Crystal has been testing out new prototype restaurants that save money. With smaller footprints and a primary focus on drive through ordering, they hope they can find the right ingredients to make Crystal profitable again. Longtime Crystal fans know that familiar red and white logo. With almost 90 years of business, Crystal has become a beloved fast food chain in the South, thanks to those tiny and delicious square hamburgers. Let me know in the comments what you remember most about Crystal. How many of those tiny burgers could you eat in one sitting? If you enjoyed this video, check out the description for links that help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.